We are in an unprecedented era in NASCAR history. Leeching is at an all-time low, and drivers are finally able to work their way up the ladder with wins and championships to their names. With this new era, lots of really talented young drivers have been able to show why they're racing the cars they're racing, even if they have to bring money to do it. But with this era has also brought into the light some drivers who have finally ran out of excuses, as their peers, teammates, and non-teammates alike have finally begun entering victory lane on a regular basis, they're still completely incapable of even sniffing success. These are the top 5 worst NASCAR drivers currently racing in 2019. We are going to take a look at the top 3 divisions of NASCAR to find the 10 worst drivers currently making laps. There are no restrictions on age, equipment, or level of funding. All that matters is how badly they suck. Let's go. Number 10 Noah Gregson Starting things off with a kick, ladies and gentlemen, Noah Gregson began his truck series career by causing a big one in the Daytona trucks race on the second lap of said race. From there, it's only been downhill. In 2018, he took the truck that had two championships and 15 wins in the previous three seasons to get a grand total of one win. From there, he was naturally promoted to the Xfinity team that's won the previous two championships in the series back to back, where he's failed to find victory lane in 29 starts so far. He's got one thing going for him though, and that is that he's actually managed to win in the truck series, which is more than almost anyone else on this list can say, which is why he's ranked 10th. Yep, there's a whole nine drivers worse than you are, Noah. Take pride in that. Number nine. Ty Dillon. Ah, yes, my old adversary. You know that Plastic Spoon himself would have to appear on this list. So with 57 starts in the truck series, Ty has three wins. Not bad. However, in 146 Xfinity starts, he's only managed to muster a single victory on fuel mileage at Indianapolis. Even 38-year-old Penske flunkout Brandon Gone managed to get two wins out of his tenure at RCR. It's not really a bad career at a glance until you take a look at his brother's results in the same equipment. Poor Ty is always going to live in Austin's shadow. Which is sad considering that that's not much of a shadow to have to live in. It's like a studio apartment shadow. Both Ty and Austin spent two years full-time in RCR trucks, with Austin getting four wins to Ty's three. Not much to discuss here. However, in nearly an equal number of Xfinity starts, Austin has seven wins to Ty's one. That's a yikes. Chin up, Ty. At least you can hang your ridiculous looking cowboy hat on the fact that you're the grandson of Dick Childress, so you never actually need to perform well to have a 20 year long cup career. Now get out there and finish 18. Number 8 Anthony Marakovich. Now I know what you're thinking. Who? And I know what else you're thinking. Marakovich is only 22 years old and only has four combined starts between trucks and Xfinity. You're probably thinking that I'm being too harsh on the poor kid. But that's because you haven't heard the story of Bristol 2018. Tony was supposed to make his Xfinity debut in the spring Bristol race, but was so horrible that he had to be taken out of the car and his debut was moved to Richmond. Now that's pretty sad. But Tony's barely got any starts to his name, so there's really not much else that can be said for now. Who knows? Maybe he'll stumble his way into a top 20 one of these days and prove us all wrong. But for now, he sits as the 8th worst driver currently in NASCAR. Number 7 Jeffrey Earnhardt I love Jeffrey and his beard as much as anyone else, but good lord, he shouldn't be anywhere near a race car. In 73 Xfinity starts, he has a grand total of 3 top 10s, all of which came for driving the JGR 18. Ever since reaching the highest level of American stock car racing, all Jeffrey has done is tear up cars and sully the Earnhardt name. Jeffrey has always said that he doesn't want to use his name to get him opportunities in top equipment, which is honorable enough I guess, but the man couldn't even get a win in K&N with DEI equipment. Sure this was scorched earth Teresa Earnhardt DEI equipment, but still, Jeffrey needs to take a good long look into the mirror, admire his facial hair, 
and hang up the helmet. Not to mention that his wreck at Texas ruined Allgaier's rate. Number six. Cody Ware. The Cambridge English Dictionary defines nepotism as the act of using your power or influence to get good jobs or unfair advantages for the members of your own family. I don't think I could write a better summary of Cody Ware's career if I tried. Cody Ware was 20 years old when he attempted to make his first Sprint Cup Series start after a whopping 14 combined Xfinity and Truck Series races at Sonoma of all places. He of course came nowhere near making the event. Ware has since made 13 cup starts all for his dad's cup team that has no justification for existing besides the convoluted charter system. Sure, he's never driven a car that's anywhere near race winning, but it's pretty obvious that if he didn't have the last name that he did, he'd probably be off selling real estate or something. Ware is sure to be around for as long as his dad can afford to pay fabricators, but Ware is pretty low on this list considering how unlikely his prospects for success were to begin with. I mean, the guy's still pretty young. Maybe Lightning will somehow manage to strike for Cody Ware someday. Now that we're about halfway through the list, let's run through some honorable mentions before we get to the worst of the worst. <coughs> it's pretty easy for perennial starting parkers like Mike Harmon, Morgan Shepard, and Derek Cope to get a bad reputation, considering most of these guys haven't had a single top 10 this millennium. But keep in mind a lot of these guys are out just trying to make a paycheck. And even Harmon had a little bit of success back in the day. Sure, the sun's already shined on the Xfinity Starting Park mainstays, but I'm glad they're still around. Lots of them are DraftKings locks, all things considered. <coughs> Annette would have been a lock for this list had I made this video last year, but his 2019 season has been a breakout one, and, and Annette has solidly locked himself as the 6th or 7th-ish best driver in the Xfinity series. You may have gotten away this time, Michael, but I'll get you in the next one. <coughs> God, I hate Rhodes. He was a total embarrassment at Junior Motorsports and was a total embarrassment for his first year at Thorsport. But they kept him and not Rico Abreu for some reason, and he's got two very anticlimactic wins to his name. And I guess that's more than most of this list can say. <coughs> I would be lying if I said I wasn't cheering for Townley during the 2015 Las Vegas truck race. What that race proved is that no matter who you are, and no matter how much money your dad has to pay off team after team for the better part of eight years, you too can have success in American motorsports. But he's not on this list because he <coughs> retired. But you can't make a worse drivers in NASCAR list without at least bringing up Townley. <sighs> how well, hopefully wherever he is now, a fully loaded utility truck is with him for any collateral damage that follows. Number five, Joe Graff Jr. I really hate this guy, like in a visceral way. He's managed to sign on as a developmental driver for Dick Childress, I don't even know how that happened. And all he's done in nearly 40 ARCA starts is dump a driver who's showing actual promise and still barely managing to win that race while running over another driver. He's been nothing but a tornado since entering the sport, and hasn't appeared to improve in any capacity. Okay, maybe I'm being too harsh. He did manage to DNQ an Xfinity race in cup level equipment. Twice. It's gotta take some talent to suck that badly. <sighs> Knowing how racing goes, we're probably gonna have to deal with Graf for the considerable future. Let's hope he keeps DNQing so we only have to deal with him occasionally. Number four. Matt Tift. Joe Graff is awful, but at the very least, there's a one in a single wins column for him. Matt Tift has been racing since 2011 and has no wins in ARCA, no wins in KN, no wins in trucks, and no wins in Xfinity. Nothing. And he hasn't been driving for Mike Harmon. Tift spent half a year driving for Kyle Busch in the truck series, posting results that would make Cody Coughlin look like the next Dale Earnhardt. What did he get for that? <laughs> Why, a full-time Joe Gibbs Xfinity car, of course! And what did he get when he had absolutely no success whatsoever in that car? You guessed it! He got a full-time Dick Childress car! 
And what did he get after doing nothing in that car for a year? Why, <laughs> he got a full-time Cup Series ride, of course. Isn't it amazing what money can do? Tift has been absolutely irrelevant since he first stepped into a race car, but at the very least, he is quietly awful. He doesn't make a spectacle out of his inability to race. Much unlike... Number 3... Natalie Decker. Doggy, where do we begin here? Natalie Decker is what Generation Z calls an e-thought. An Instagram sensation that exists only to get lonely men to beg their parents for money to pay for her package and labeled bathwater. Make no mistake about it, Natalie Decker is not a race car driver. Natalie Decker is a brand. The only reason that she's racing is to make her sponsors a quick buck and to get some vanity shots for her timeline. And in her wake, she has left nothing but a path of destruction. Decker's body count has risen to levels that rival Stephen Wallace. Decker has been a missile, a new age caution clock for the truck series, and her team may as well save their money on spotters considering she couldn't be bothered to actually listen to one. Decker is a sad reflection on the state of NASCAR racing, which makes it all the more pathetic that there are two drivers that are actually worse than she is. May God have mercy on our souls. Number two. Riley Herbst. What a sad, sad state of affairs. Herbst is embarrassingly awful. Joe Gibbs Racing dipped into ARCA, which had somehow managed to remain clean of cup teams that have laid waste to Xfinity and trucks. Until of course 2017 when they dropped this ticking time bomb into the series. Before ARCA, Herp spent a year in Kane and West as a teammate to Todd Gilland, who won six races on his way to the championship. How many races did Herbs win? Come on, why would you even ask that question? To be completely fair to Herbs, he did somehow managed to win a race in his first season. One race, in equipment that is by far the best in every other series that Gibbs is in. Since then, he's been a complete failure of a driver, running mediocre races every week that he isn't wrecking out. To put it into perspectives, in 11 ARCA starts, 16-year-old Ty Gibbs has more wins and laps led than Herps has in 46 starts. As Kyle Petty would put it, that's incredible. Riley Herbst and his relentless mediocrity is most likely to be rewarded with a full-time truck series gig going into 2020, because we all know it's going to happen. And to top it all off, the company that keeps Riley in these top-level seats is named... Terrible Herps. I can't even make a joke out of that. Parody is dead. And number one is Brandon Jones. It could not be anybody else. Brandon Jones is the worst driver currently in NASCAR. Jones is so unbelievably terrible. When he isn't nosediving into the wall on the backstretch, he's plowing into wrecks that were already halfway over or bringing home race winning equipment in 14th place. There is nobody in NASCAR who has gotten nearly as many second chances as Brandon Jones. In 44 truck starts, most of which he was driving a truck that other drivers had won in that season, he's managed to win Zero races with a grand total of 38 laps led. But here's the kicker. In 133 Xfinity starts, Brandon Jones has seven top fives. Seven. That's after spending two full years at RCR and two full years at JGR. While his teammates are out winning week after week, race after race, Brandon is sitting back in 12th place and embarrassing himself. But don't bring any of that up, 
because every week people will say, Oh, it's just bad luck. Or at least he's doing better this year. Or that spring 2018 Bristol happened, so nothing you say actually matters. Yeah, there's been a hundred drivers who have been close to winning races, but then don't win that race. That may as well be the title of Justin Allgaier's memoir. But that's the only race that Brandon Jones has ever come close to winning in his entire NASCAR career. Yeah, the guy's got five ARCA wins. Somehow. Most of which came after drivers that would have beat him ended up throwing away the race. But every single time you try and criticize this guy, the excuse for grade comes out in full force. And nothing makes me laugh more than the people who tell me that the only reason Michael Annette is doing good this year is because half the competitive cars from 2018 went away from 2019. They just so happen to be the same people who say Brandon Jones has improved this season. I wasn't going to do this. But here is definitive proof that Brandon Jones is the worst driver currently racing in NASCAR. In 2018, Michael Annette's average finish was 18.6. As of recording this video, Michael Annette's 2019 average finish is 10.2, an increase of 8.5 positions. As for Brandon Jones, his average finish in 2018 was 13.6. As of recording this video, Jones' average finish for 2019 is 15.8. Wow. I just don't see how you can defend this guy. He is the definition of trash. But because of his rich dad, he's going to be around for years to come. Maybe one day all of the teams will pull out a NASCAR and Brandon Jones will finally manage to back into a win in a race with a six car field. But until that day comes, if it ever does, Brandon Jones will be remembered for being at one point the worst driver in NASCAR. Thank you all so much for watching this video. This was um, a video that I've wanted to make for a while but never had the wherewithal to actually do. It was originally going to be a top five list, but I decided to uh, try and get as many clicks as possible <clears throat> by <laughs> by uh, doing a top ten list instead. Um, I guess I really don't know what else to say. If you're not following the Twitter by now, what's wrong with you? If you, I'm also on Instagram if you care. I don't use that much. It's really just for storm chasing at this point. But as far as this video is concerned, thank you all so much for watching. And I'll see you at whatever it is I make next. Bye!